got are absolutely perfect. Basically three days northeastly, one meter swell. We've got lots and lots of color here. To start off with, what I'm using is obviously my dogfight. I've got one of the new sample rods that I'm testing out today. I've got 200 pound uh, braid leader. I'm gonna do a Palamon knot. I'm gonna show you how to set up this whole trace. It's a Palamon knot, it's a number one power swivel. To do the Palamon knot, all we do is a granny knot, which is literally like that. We then take the granny knot and open it and slide our swivel through it and pull down, pull tight, and cut off the tag end. The trace that I'm using is our tuna circle that I've snelled 1.2 mil nylon. I've done two figure of eights over it. That's basically my stopper or my crimper if you want to call it that. But that's going to stop my sinker from sliding down. The reason we use this is so that it does not damage the actual 1.2 nylon. So we tie two figure of eights on either side and that's basically what it looks like. I'm going to slide a little bead over the top of that and then I'm going to put on my NT swivel. There's my NT swivel. So basically it's a sliding trace, figure of eight. Lubricate, pull tight, slide down. Cut off the tag end and all I need to do now is attach my swivel, uh, my actual sinker line with my sinker and I'm going to use a cone sinker because it is flat. Very important when fishing for diamonds down here to remember to bring your gloves so that you can actually handle the fish a lot better and they don't basically damage your fingers. I will show you what our fingers look like after the show but those gloves are very important. Keep them close by. I'm using our Maxima 27 kilo as a sinker snoot. I'm just measuring how long it is. And because I'm gonna use a dangle, I'm gonna make it about that long. Tying on one of our sinker clips, just so I can change sinkers if I need be. Seven ounce cone sinker. Just attaching a dangle, basically it's a solid ring, nylon coated wire with a little bit of foam. The foam is just going to help hold the actual mackerel on and I'm going to show you how I rig it. I'm trying to make sure that the measurements are right for it, for casting purposes. And I've got a little bit of slack line here, that's what I want, and that's basically it. So there is my entire trace done for fishing today. There's the length of it, that's what it looks like. Very important to remember, it's early in the morning, the sun's only starting to come up. This place, Umtanzini, cooks in summertime. And being the 1st of March, it's the middle of summer for us. Your climbing scarf, very, very important for the back of your neck, for your sun protection. Another very important thing is your hat, your sunglasses, some sunscreen. Very, very important, guys. Don't come to Umtanzini without it. And lots and lots of water. Believe me, you get dehydrated very quickly here. When we walk onto the beach for the diamond, skate in particular, okay, there's the, the beach on your side. There's a bank coming out like this. And another bank running over here like that. What you're looking for is the water coming over here runs out like that. We want to put our position ourselves over here to throw it into the bank over here. The smell of our blood from our bait is basically you pulled out further and the diamonds that are sitting over here, over here, over here are going to basically come up that actual um, rip current, if you can call it. And you can see there's a perfect example of it. Sand bank, sand bank, and there's the rip current going out towards the back over there. So there's a perfect example of a rip current and that's basically what's going to happen. You'll find as the tide comes in and the water starts coming over this bank a lot more, the rip current is going to intensify and the fish are going to feed a lot, a lot more aggressively. So that's basically what we're looking for guys. So when you walk on the beach, find a bank and a bank with a rip current and fish in that area. Okay guys, what I'm going to do is show you how to bait up 
a dangle for a diamond bait and this is one of those competition baits that we do so basically what we need is to measure so we're going to measure quickly from the dangle to there okay so i'm going to cut it basically just behind the actual fin back again and we're going to try and expose as much of the flesh as possible so we're trying to take off as much of the skin as we can to get as much of the blood and that out of the bait we do that just so that the cotton actually holds a pair of scissors cutting off the gill plates cut a couple of thin slithers of mackerel Basically there's a couple of thin slithers of bait. I'm just going to grab my chocker hammer quickly. Chocker hammer. Okay. To get a maximum amount of blood and smell out, what I do is I actually open up the macro. Take my nine nose, tune a circle through the nose. Precision cutting, you can see it's almost perfect to where I want it to be. I'm taking my thick cotton, it's a Kingfisher thick cotton, it's latex. And these things are so comfortable to actually hold and work with. Then we just wind, 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 wind. And do not be afraid to put a lot of cotton on. What the cotton does, because it's semi frozen, is actually pulls tight as the bait's defrosting the cotton actually starts pulling tight on itself and as it pulls tight it squeezes all the juice out, the oils out and of course all the blood out again now all I'm doing here is softening up the bait to release as much oil and blood in this as I can. First cutlet on the side. Again, it's more to do with the volume that you're exposing, more to do with the surface area that you're exposing than anything else here. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, all of them, I've got. most of my diamonds very oily very bloody and as the defrosts more the cotton actually extra uh, contracts and uh, like I say it always pulls the, the blood out pushes the blood out let's go and have the first throw and see what happens along for once get out of the office a little bit seem to be into something oh a little bit of pull a little bit small I reckon a baby diamond but yeah as Ray said three days northeast hot weather and we are in the best place to be the banks
Ja. As I've said, three days northeasterly, and if you look all around us, it's only just turned on now. He's gone away. We've got two more guys further down there, they've just gone away. The tide is just starting to push now. We've got maybe another three, four hours here, and it's going to be gun smoke. As the tide comes more and more, we're going to get a lot more diamonds. There is, however, quite a few small hammerheads that are giving us a bit of a working out. I can feel now, I've only been in the water for maybe two minutes and I can feel the hammers already got us. Look at these little tech hammers, they're about that size and they're giving me a hard time. But anyway, we'll get a fish now. Watch this fish, <laughs> Oh yeah, hey, taking a bit of string there. Guys, you can see I'm using the BG8000. We've got 50 pound J braid on there. The new Dawa Elite 15 foot. This is such a lovely bend and a beautiful casting rod. And you see if it bends all the way to that eye over there and then it's got the lovely backbone. You can just really put your, put your back into the fish. A bit closer now, just on the edge of the bank there. when the water comes, it just supports it, makes it glide much easier to the back. Yes. Circle up perfectly in the side of the mouth where it's supposed to be. And that's what's so nice about it, easy to remove. So guys, there's only one hook with diamonds and flat fish, and that's a circle up. There we go, guys. Mike's just landed his fish and while he was, we were releasing his fish, my rod went away. when the tide actually starts pushing. See, uh, see you next week. See you next week, guys. Cheers.